How's it going everyone and welcome to Coffee Ring Tales. Today I wanted to have a look at a simple elderly man, an Afrikaner hero, Volrad Voldemarder. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee and let me tell you a story. There's not much known about Volrad Voldemarder's early life. He was born in Schaumburg, Germany around 1708. Later in life he became a soldier for the Verenigde Oost Indische Compagnie also known as the Dutch East India Company. In 1752, the Dutch East India Company assigned him as a corporal at Steenberg, South Africa for three years, returning to Europe afterwards. It's unknown when he was married to his wife, Jana Charlotta, but they had two sons together, one of which was Christian Ludwig Voltemade. In 1770, he returned to South Africa, leaving his wife behind in Europe becoming a foreman on a dairy farm owned by the Dutch East India Company in Maisenburg in the following year. Now you might have heard of the name Cape of Good Hope. Before John II of Portugal gave it that name, it was named Cape of Storms, and for good reason. The area is prone to unpredictable storms, especially in the winter months between June and September. For this reason, ships were told to rather use the port at Simmons Town instead of Table Bay in the months between May and August, as it was protected from the northwestern storms. At this point, Captain Barend Lamron and his ship, the Younger Thomas, comes into the story. At the end of May 1773, Captain Barend and four other vessels ignored this warning and made port at Table Bay. On that day, Captain Barend and a crew of 200 or so men was ready to set sail. There was one problem though, the wind. Strong winds were blowing from the northwest, a wind the area's people knew all too well. It was a wind that brought storms, and dark clouds soon started rolling in. The storm hit the coastline that night, with massive waves strong enough to snap the ship's anchors in the bay. In the early morning of 1st June 1773, emergency shots were heard. De Jong and Thomas's anchor lines had snapped. The ship was being smashed against jagged rocks at the mouth of the Salt River. As horrible as it would be to see a ship being smashed against the rocks, and sailors jumping for their lives, there was one good piece of news for Joachim van Plattenberg. The crew of the Jonge Thomas had unloaded the 18 chests of gold they were transporting for safekeeping in the castle. He immediately sent 30 soldiers to the beach, not to help, but to collect salvage and capture any would-be thieves. Among these soldiers was Volrad Voltemade's son, Corporal Christian Ludwig Voltemade. While he and his men were on the beach, Volrad Voltemade who was around 65 years old, came riding on his horse Fonk to bring his son some wine and a loaf of bread so that he would have something good to eat. It was then he heard the ship's crew shouting for help, braving the waves to swim for their lives. No one noticed him until he rushed into the waves and foam with his horse. Everyone on the beach stopped recovering cargo and just stared at the sight of this old man riding into the immense waves of the storm towards the sinking, broken ship and then he disappeared from view behind the waves. Then suddenly he reappeared from behind the waves, with two sailors hanging from each side of his horse. He started making his way back to the shore, periodically disappearing and reappearing from behind the waves. Finally, he reached the coast, and the two men dropped to the ground, people rushing towards them to help. Before they could reach them, Volrod swung his horse around and went back into the waves to help more people. He did this seven times, pulling out 14 people. After the seventh time, he nearly collapsed from exhaustion and the cold. He got off his horse to allow them to catch their breath. But this did not last long. He was barely off Funk when the ship started falling apart. He mounted Funk and swung him around again. This would be the last time he braved the storm. Six to 12 people grasped for Voltemada and Funk when they reached the wreck of the ship. The men grabbed the tail, saddle, and the bridle of Fonk. Borat struggled to keep Fonk's head above the waves, but neither he nor Fonk had the strength left, and they disappeared underneath the waves. Volrod's body washed ashore the next day. Around 50 people survived the shipwreck, 14 saved by Volrod himself. No attempts were made to save people from the ship after Volrod disappeared. Volrod was seen as a fool that went looking for his death, but the Dutch East India Company did take note of his heroic act in 1775. Here in Zeventien, caught wind of this act due to a combination of the book, A Voyage to the Cape of Good Hope, 
written by the eyewitness Carl Thunberg and Andri Sparman, and the sailors Volrod saved telling stories of his act to anybody who would listen. The Dutch East India Company provided a large sum of money to his widow and his sons to acknowledge his deed. The company also named the ship after him, the Held Voldemar, and in 1973 South Africa called the tugboat the SA Volrod Voldemar after him. In 1970 the Voldemar Declaration of Bravery was created as the highest honor that a civilian could get for bravery. This was replaced by the Voldemar Cross of Bravery in 1988. The distinction was ended in 2002 and replaced by the Order of Mendy for Bravery. That was the story of Volrod Voltemada. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then hit the like button and share your thoughts. If not, hit the dislike button and let me know where I can improve. Till next time, have a good one.